Okay, this is uh, Steve. I've got uh, the uh, Sahara Oceanographer group behind me with, uh, I believe it's Coast Angel, which you probably can't see the writing on. I got a little graffiti art here, Ralph something, uh, my, <laughs> my grandfather, the sales, one of the greatest salesmen I've ever known, and some other non gibberish human uh, sticky stuff all over the dock. There's a little ladder here you probably can't see, but the Sahara Oceanographer is behind me, and I'm just making this little quick video about the kind of the grand grand name of the fleet, the Sahara Oceanographer, which is a vessel built by the U.S. federal government for NOAA to circumnavigate at the equator without refueling 25,000 nautical miles that has 2 million nautical miles on the ship's log, 2 million nautical miles on the ship's log before it was sold off, retired, uh, decommissioned, and went into private hands. And it became the breakwater for Kirkland for a while because Kirkland wouldn't let anyone build a real breakwater, so they just moved the Sahara into uh, the same spot where the breakwater would have been built. And it served there for several years, and then it got kicked out, and it's back here in the ship canal in Ballard waiting for its new mission. It's a new mission. It hasn't had a mission in quite some time because it's been decommissioned by NOAA. And uh, someone from, I think, Malta purchased it and started to convert it into one of the top 20 largest private motor yachts in the world. It's not really a motor yacht. It's a naval vessel. This is uh, looks like and is essentially a naval destroyer. It was built to Navy specs. It was built for all conditions. It's over engineered ice class. It's been to both poles, I believe, and it was the first ship with a U.S. flag ever to enter China, and it supported a couple of hundred scientists for many, many years, a decade or two, three decades, uh, doing really important ocean research. It's got a something like 20 by 30 garage door roll-up that the weather balloons came out of, and five decks, and four Fairbanks Morse diesels that have two crankshafts each, so there's eight crankshafts in those four engines. I saw one out front on the deck. It's eight feet long by two foot tall. One crankshaft has two of them, and they drive these two gigantic electric motors uh, that power the vessel up to 18, 20 knots. It can run from weather. I've seen it, pictures of the walls of water coming out. It just goes right through it, but it's got the ability to evade weather if it needs to. It's gone into some inclement weather just for research and ice breaking duty and so forth. So it's way off the charts as far as the size and the cost and the logistics of deploying a vessel like this for helping the oceans in a different fashion than it was originally intended. But it's here and they want to sell it and we're going to buy it. And it's going to be a very, very interesting ELMA or extreme lifestyle marketing asset because we're going to fix it all up not like a super yacht would be fixed up. It's going to be different. Much more hippie, a much more wacko, much more maverick, much more, what did they do with that part of the ship? It's going to be different and it's going to move. It's not going to sit anymore. No, it's going to move and under its own power with diesel. We're not going to try to convert it to vegetable oil. Nope. Uh, it's going to require some people that come and want to do the right thing for the oceans just like they tried to do for 30 years and well the oceans are in an awful lot of trouble so possibly the Sahara oceanographer I call it the so like Peter Gabriel album or significant other this is a really significant other Elma the so and we're gonna keep it the Sahara oceanographer both names I don't have a problem with people changing the name of a ship I just add aliases it's kind of a geek thing we have aliases for ourselves why not alias a ship and leave the names alone. Leave them there for people who remember the ship by oceanographer or remember the ship by Sahara or remember the ship by something else we call it like the Peter Gabriel G-Saw Frontiere. We'll just paint G-Saw Frontiere right on the stern, the line in the sand, the departure point from wacko behavior we've been doing for 8.5 millennia. See Federico Fellini if you doubt me. 8.5 is a film he made, and for social proof, see Fellini, Roma, and Satyricon, just to see if you get a little clue about how wacko humans have been for a very long time. He's Italian, and 
He's got that DNA that goes back into all those wacko cultures dating back several thousand years. It's an amazing place, Italy. It's an amazing culture. It's an old culture like Egypt. And the older the culture, the crazier and wackier it gets, kind of. So this is just an introduction to the first half of a 303-foot, 3,700-gross-ton vessel that we're working diligently to bring into the tribe and make the grand dame of the world's oceans that essentially is the global floating headquarters of the tribe. Wherever it is, it's going to leave a mark on people's imagination and it's going to raise a great deal of money for the oceans. That's what it's there for now that it's completed its task of National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration duty. It's going to raise billions with a B of dollars for the world's beleaguered ocean dwellers through all of the ocean concerns. That would be Sea Shepherd, Moss Landing, Marine Labs, Oceana, Sam and Mary and Company. I call them Sam. Sam Malone and Mary Steen Virgin. One mythical, one not so mythical. Both amazing thespians. And One World, One Ocean, which is McGillivray and Freeman. The Five Summer Stories people. Irvine. John Wayne Airport, to go with John Wayne Marina up here in Squint, where another vessel has been lying for the last couple of years we'll talk about later. Scripps in La Jolla, Cousteau, I believe their Western Hemisphere headquarters are somewhere in Baja or Mexico. It's an awful lot of work needed in the Sea of Cortez. And let's not forget Woods Hole, they've got the big boats. They need the most money of all of them probably but we're going to spread things out and they're going to raise money very, very differently than they have in the past because they've mostly been doing one at a time, hard to raise money auctions. And I don't know, celebrity roasts and pancake breakfasts and just send a communication out so that people send another fish for a day. We're building a fleet for these important concerns and they're gonna get supported by our vessels. We're gonna end up doing respite care for the people at sea. We'll meet them at sea. We'll help their families. We'll be their USO. I don't think they have a USO. They're gonna have one now. This is gonna provide it. Yes, it is. And that's not where this operation leaves off. We have to help Newman salad dressing people. We have to help Big Kitty Rescue. We have to help World Wildlife Fund, the rhino people, the people doing holes in Africa for kids that don't have any clean drinking water, the chimp sanctuaries, the people who are trying to figure out how to save the, the really, really at-risk species like the snow leopard and the animals in Primor and Kamchatka. You just have to go one or two channels in on your dial away from the broadcast TV channels and the rah-rah, whatever they're doing in sports, to see how much trouble our oceans and our land habitat are. Biodiverse used to be, rainforests and other parts of the planet are in so much trouble. And if we don't come to their rescue and try, at least try, life is just a try. We don't know if we can prevail. It may be too late. But what's the point of being here if you're not trying to do something? And so the kids that are dying, again tonight, all 25,000 of them, those are one of our beneficiaries. And so are the pets that are getting slaughtered around the world because they're hungry. Humans are hungry or they're inconvenient and just dump them off with the pound. And when their last day expires, they go away because there's no money or nobody figured out how to get the vets on board and give away the spaying and neutering or whatever, tax the food, whatever it takes, stop slaughtering 10 million pets a year. Dogs, cats, snakes, horses, birds, you name it, we slaughter it, and we don't take responsibility for it, just like we haven't taken responsibility for most of the things we've done to the natural world for eight and a half millennia. See Frederico Fellini. This is Steve signing off from the end of the public dock, overlooking the Sahara oceanographer, a very significant other Peter Gabriel paleo gene dinosaur line in the sand vessel for the project.